He went that way. <laughs> Which way did he go? That way. <laughs> All right, so we are. All right, we are live. You guys can sign in right here. Again, please do not sign me out. How are you going to sign me out? Just go to Gmail. Okay. So give me one second. Okay. Take your time. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I pressed that. No, I just clicked in. Oh, you clicked? Oh, can't you press that too? Yes, you can. Well, I just want to try. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, guys. Are you ready? Do you feel like your audience is ready to listen? Can you give me that pen so I can make another one? Okay, where is the channel group in? Um, Our claim is Channelization of River caused more flooding and issues for communities. So, what do you guys know about channelization? Anything? <laughs> A whole bunch. Last week? Okay, then we'll teach you. <laughs> So there are two general types of channels. There's human interference, and that's when people like make a pathway for the water to flow through. And then there's natural occurrence, and that's when the path forms over time by itself. And then there's three general types of channels. There's bedrock channels, and they form in like the steepest part of a river. And the picture to the far left shows you what that looks like. And then there's alluvial channels and they form in sediment that was previously in the valley and sediment is like the nasty particles left in a river after the flood and that's the metal picture and then there's braided channels and that's just like small channels separated by islands islands in the picture. uh why should we care about the mississippi river we should care about the mississippi river because the river is a risk to our living situation also, the levels of the flood keep getting higher, and the flood can ruin our environment that we live in. So, yes. the article itself says it's dangerously underestimated. That can cause some fear. <laughs> so, the Mississippi River article can relate to channels is because of flooding. Some evidence from the article article relates to our to our article. For two examples is the town saw similar floods in 1995, 1996, 1999, and 2001, the worst still was the 200-year-old flood in 2008, but none of those compared to the devastation in 1993 when river gauges, gauges at Hannibal <laughs> measured Flood waters at levels expected expected only once in five centuries. Another, so, yeah. So yeah, that's another. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how it basically relate. the yeah, basic piece of evidence. So what is a flood? A flood is just simply when water overflows in a stream. And then next we have a few different like examples of flooding. Oh, I'm sorry. The regional floods is rapid melting of snow in, in spring or heavy, heavy spring rains that from overwhelmed rivers. Flash floods are rapid rises in water levels, and it can be very disastrous. And ice jam floods, which is near river bends, mouths of, yeah, the mouths and points where the river slope decreases. Oh, okay, so the dam failure floods is human interference with stream systems can cause can cause floods. A prime example is the failure of a dam or an article artificial what is level level designed to contain smaller moderate floods. And we'll yeah. show you later. Yeah. We'll show you later. yeah okay, still... and we have some video how to be prepared for floods. We'll show it like. 
Where is it? Are you turning it down? Turn it the other way. But it doesn't go all the way. Which one says volume? Other way. <laughs> You're turning it down. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, somebody. Sorry, I paused it because it kept going. It down, but... I go over here. Okay. That's weird. Let's go over here. No, that one. That's okay, weird. no video. It's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, we'll show you later. Click on present again. Click on. Play. You should be a button. Click on YouTube. And then turn up the volume and see if that works. A terrorizing mm. event would have to be evacuated because the community went through a lot of things. But it's a lot of people prepared and things like that. Is that as long as it goes? Everything is fine to dance because it seems like <laughs> water spreads. We took everything out of the place. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious? Destroyed property. The driveway is the first thing to go under. And then it's all about how you get in, especially in water that's uh, close freezing or, or coats over with ice. There's a chance that you might not get back in for weeks. You know, canned goods and stuff will stay preserved for a long time, but not just stuff in the freezer, the meats, that type of thing. What do you do with them? There is always, uh, the zoos are always accepting food for animals. We have a, a boat that we use to get um, into the yard because we know that that's going to be an issue. Uh, so it's, it's about making sure that that motor that only gets run once a year is up and running and, and, uh, and working well. Flood our drains in the basement. Just kind of do all the preparedness things, getting ready in case something does happen. We also, before the water has a chance to cover the driveway, we always get a pile of sand uh, delivered and so that we have sand on site. Make sure we have water batteries for our flashlights and do all the kinds of things that we we just have to do to be ready in case we have to leave in a real hurry or protect ourselves in our home a week or two before we get to the crest. I, have, I put together just a bag that's my tool bag. And I throw um, jeans in there, I have some t-shirts in there, some undergarments, I kind of have a jacket. And so I throw all that in my to-go bag. And I also include a week's worth of medication in there and then my cosmetics that I need and toiletries and that kind of thing. Along with my important papers. That's kind of our to-go kit. And we put it all together, it's down by the front door. And then when um, we get real close to the crest, and then I end up moving it into the back of my car so that's with me at all times. Of course, I have my cell phone and the charger for my cell phone and have that with me and all kinds of It's one of those things you just can't fail to take a chance to affect it. Uh, last weekend, where a deer uh, had uh, unplugged the, the extension cord that one of the cell phones outside. No, pet deer. No. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that tripped that up. But, uh, okay. But, yeah, so you guys can be So be ready. So. All right. So we have a meander which is just a river that's in a wavy position it goes based off like how the wind's blowing the water that pretty much forms it mm -hmm. oh, wow. other key factors to river it's cabin husband and point bar so we, will, um, we had some predictions in the game we wanted to try to make a wider river or a deeper or make a borders like higher to hold all the floods that we have or change the sinuosity of the river. So this is our variables. Uh, we changed the width of the river. First it was 10 centimeters and 20s and 30 and we kept uh, depth and channel and stream table and base levels the same. Uh, our second experiment was we changed the height, the height of the channel borders and then we kept the width and that's in channel stream table and base levels the same. And this is our reverse. This is this is five. No, this is ten centimeters. Twelve. This is twenty, and this is thirty. They all look different, and then we basically pick the best ones that look okay. So we picked this one, and we tried to make a higher borders. So the solutions to our problem to make channelization more like 
for less flooding, we decided to make a narrow river with higher borders and which gives like a more support. Yeah, and a steeper sloped in direction to flow water. for the river. Yeah. And the water stays. Yeah. Well, so things we could have done differently would have been like being more creative and being more organized. Yeah. yeah. And this is so. Do you guys have any questions? Thanks. My job is here. Your job is here. <laughs> 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 Wait, what? It was just the first thing we saw. No, it was uh, like we made a human, like a human-made channel, yeah. not a natural human recording. Yeah. Foil. Like it was just the first thing we saw, so like, yeah. Uh, why not experiment? Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> Can you? Like, say louder. Yeah, you would change all the contra constructions around. Probably you would take out all the trees around. And then... Maybe, like, borders or something? Yeah. Get big borders. It will control it. Yeah, it, and it will like create this little fountains. Let's say that, like waterfalls right here, and it basically would like uh, slow down the like the velocity of the water, which makes it slower. I guess. Yeah. Sounds uh so I'm gonna remove that for her. Gonna gonna dare. Slowly, can you close my Chromebook? All right. So yeah, our presentation is on sandbars. All right. Do you guys know what a sandbar is? No. Yeah, it's like a little island of sand and like 
the middle of, of like a river or like a beach, you know? Beach. So yeah, go. All right, so what is a barge? A barge is a flat bottom boat that carries goods, usually travels through rivers or canals. And, uh, yeah. So what do you, what do you uh, think are some problems that sandbars might cause? Yeah, that's a good one. Barges. That's a good one, Dennis. Barges. The barges are just stuck in the sandbars. The fish will be able to get through. That's also very correct. <laughs> any any other ones? No? All right. Next. All right. So some problems that sandbars basically cause is, like, it makes it tough for barges to basically travel. And, uh, like, the article that was signed out, uh, in the article, it says talked about the Mississippi River and like how sandbars are basically stalling the barges from going up the river, and um, it also talked about uh, how long a river like is increases the chance of sandbars being developed, and uh, the delays of like removing sandbars and stuff like that is adding to the operating costs of like barges basically like for it to get transport the goods. Okay, so we had four trials. And for trial one, uh, it was basically our control. And so what we did was we flattened out the entire sand surface and we turned on the water on uh, a little bit more than half of the dial and we let it flow for a couple minutes. And those are pictures of uh, after two minutes, that's how it looked. And no intervention means that we didn't stop it and we didn't like touch it at all and we didn't we didn't do anything to uh, change the outcome. And then for number two, we we thought that since sandbars were going to uh, develop anyways, that we can control where it would go. So we put a rock in the middle mm -hmm. of uh, the river, and it ended up still making a sandbar, but it, like, curved the water around. And, yeah. The third one, um, we decided to uh, use glass, plastic tubes, and that's, that's this one we just made like a tunnel. Oh yeah, yeah. This, this one, this one, we just like made a canal in between. We didn't put anything in there. We just let it go, and the rock's still there because we forgot to take it out. But the rock's still there, <laughs> and it completely like just fell. And then it fell over after a couple minutes, and it stopped the. Well, it's still sandbars formed. And for the fourth one, we put little glass tubes. I'm not sure if you can see them, but they're like around here and stuff. And the water would uh, go into them and the water would have a place to go instead of it just going freely. So that helped a lot of the, the tearing down of the sand. So you can see like the, the tubes are like covered in sand and over here it's like so thin and then we put rocks there because we thought that maybe it'll like stop sand from going all over the place and so i asked uh, mr baldwin and he said one of the solutions that like people figured out was like dredging and what it basically does is cleans out like the bed of the river and like removes like like materials that build up under a river basically and like there's like a video so what basically what a boat this dredging boat does is when where there's a sandbar the boat goes out and there's this little paddling thing and it scoops up the sand and it shoots it out the back or the front whichever one you want <laughs> What? <laughs> there's a little bit of water and there's a little bit of sand. Thank <laughs> you. 
Did you get it? <laughs> So what do you guys think are some good impacts of sandbars? Like, do you guys think there are any? Little walkways. Why don't you, why don't you think so, Dennis? I don't know. That's a good answer. You can walk around. Yeah, it's like a little island. But they're not that big. <laughs> Did you say throw a party? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Miss Walt, great idea. Um, are there you yeah. could if you wanted to. Yeah. Well, there's. Let's say there's a moose. <laughs> a moose could go on it if it wanted to. I wouldn't want to live there, <laughs> but it could. I don't want to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So, another solution that I like that we came up with was like control where the sandbars develop. Like in the, I think it was the second uh, second trial, where like control where the sandbar is formed. And like make a way for like the barges to travel through, and like I also found out that sandbars actually kind of help the environment in a way. And I read an article called called the ecological impact of a dam, and it said like how uh, sandbars can contain like um, vegetation and like contain like diverse plants, which are which are actually good. Uh, these are some of the citations we had. And then, like, so basically, to sum up the presentation, sandbars like make it tough for barges to travel, and it also like, which in turn makes it like hard for goods to be like transported. And uh, like, yeah, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Why do you like not all at once? Yeah, please take your time. How would you create a sandbar? Like in real life, like, is there like a thing to do? Yes, how would we create a sandbar? How would you create a sandbar? <laughs> it, it, most of the time, it forms naturally. When how would I intervene? In like a full size or back there? How would I intervene in sandbars? Well, you see, we <laughs> we use dredging. That was one of our, or we uh, we put in a. Uh, obstacles that the water would have to go around so you could like position where the sandbar is but there's we didn't find much of a solution to completely stop uh sand to make a sandbar. oh you want to make a sandbar <laughs> i just don't want to make till you dig a lot of sand just for pile <laughs> if you want anyone um, okay Um, Are you asking us or the class? Um, I guess like controlling where the sandbar is, like make like a like a big way for like the boat to travel, basically. Like, you know, yeah, that's all. I can do. Hovercraft. 
but so is one with the wind. Okay. Um, especially if you're going downhill. So we ship a lot of our cold uh, Mediterranean water. A lot of our material goes down to this. Super cheap way to ship stuff. What do you think? The next one. Horses. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, I heard that Laura and Lee wanted this. Well, I didn't know it yet. Oh, you're doing good. Where's the candy? Oh, I forgot on my car. Sorry, Mike. It's not so good. Do you want to get so many questions? <laughs> These questions are about to make you like wish you never took. Okay. Well, you do know I have three other people to answer them for me. So. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Okay. Same thing. <laughs> All right. Oh, I guess. Yeah. I don't have a voice, so bear with me, please. So our claim is um, the Mississippi River will change course to create a new delta without human intervention. Um, before I go to another slide, who knows what uh, discharge is? Who knows what this charge is? I'm sorry, I don't have a voice. Okay, this charge. <laughs> Do you know oh, what it discharge is? Water is getting out of the river at a uh, great velocity. Yeah. yeah. It's close. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the Mississippi is the fourth largest and ninth largest river in the world by discharge so its discharge is 593,000 cubic feet per second what? oh yeah the equation is velocity divided by the um multiplied by the cross section <laughs> 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 so, um, the Mississippi is also the largest drainage system on the North American continent. So, all these little tiny rivers you see up there, they all flow into the Mississippi, and the Mississippi flows into the Gulf of Mexico, which is the mouth, which is right there at the tip in um, Louisiana that flows into the Gulf of Mexico. So, um, does anybody happen to know what a delta is? It's like the mouth where the river enters the ocean. It's pretty good. <laughs> a delta is a flat des depositional plane formed at the river mouth of a triangular shaped deposit at the mouth of a stream. Okay, so if you're asking, where can you find a delta? So the delta is usually found at the lowest point of the river. 
this is usually where the flow is pretty slow. There's a lot of water flowing and there's a lot of deposition, but there's actually not much erosion. Most of the erosion can be found at the top, um, the high grounds, and that just flows to the bottom. Formation of a delta. So a delta is formed when a river brings a lot of sediment from the high ground. When the river finally gets to the sea, the flow starts to slow down and the um, the sediment groups together and forms, um, you know, big particles. And then when the sediment is deposited faster, then it can be removed and the delta is formed. What is in an alluvian pan? Allu alluvial fan, a fan-shaped mass of rock deposited by a stream or the slope. When the slope of the land decreases, <laughs> alluvial fans form when the stream flows from mountainous to mountains to flat land. When the slope, when the steep, when a steep slope stream reaches a flat plain, the speed of the stream suddenly decreases. Thus, and most of the sediment is left at the base of the slope. So, as you can see from that picture, which is really small, I don't think any of you can see it. Well, <laughs> the top of the um, the top of the the high ground there, sediment is deposited down the slope of the mountain, and it reaches the bottom point which is the lowland, which you see in the bottom corner. So the, the alluvial, if you're wondering the difference between an alluvial fan and a delta, the alluvial fan is on land and deltas are in water. These are the answers. We already said these. Floodplains. <laughs> um, a floodplain is an area along a river that forms from sediments deposited when the river overflows its banks. The volume of water in nearly all streams varies depending on the amount of rainfall and snow melt in the watershed. So, um, we have this article and um, what, what it's about, it's like they want create sub deltas which is on the right you see that <coughs> this is our, the sub deltas so they're gonna make um like new deltas for the river to um so they can keep the river so how it works um since the mississippi river naturally builds land by depositing sediment along its bank we aim to build new land by harnessing the, the that very process by by opening new river mouths and target locations for certain periods of time we can um, replenish land more efficiently and less successfully than um, we have to date. <clears throat> Here are some benefits of a communities, which uh, uh, mm. <laughs> okay uh greater certain about where it is safe uh to live and work in the future um these are some benefits from the deltas like forming the deltas this is some from uh benefits for the community uh there'll be like a uh, more accessible delta for tourists and residents um economic development and landscapes Okay, so when we did the stream table test, how we measured it was um, we did like one minute time intervals and then we measured each like minute how far or how like how much it's about apart. So the first minute, so actually first what we did was we set up like points that we're going to measure after each minute. Um, so there were five of those. And then so this was the first minute and then you could see like as it keeps going. Like water, you like the water makes it erode out of the side, so that it like gradually gets bigger. So that's minute two, minute three, four, and then you could see it like keep on getting bigger. And then at minute six, go more. It just like completely like flood and it changed its course um, a lot. So then for barriers, what we did was we just like set up two barriers just to see kind of like what it did. 
um, but that didn't really hold, like it didn't do anything to, it didn't like keep the river on a certain course. So the next one, we put barriers like along the edges of both sides of the river trying to like to keep it in place. Um, and then that was successful. Successful. Uh, in conclusion, we should uh, manage the distribution of water and create a, a su sustainable delta to prevent the mouth from changing course. Any questions? How do you make one hundred dollars? What is it? Artificial deltas? Can you speak up, please? <laughs> they said that they want to make more deltas. Who said that? The article. I did. I did say it. Sub deltas. Sub deltas. Yes, you can. I, I can't hear it. I'm definitely here. Yes, but how, how did they make sub deltas? There you go. Whoever said anything about a sub delta. Yeah, we did. Did we? Yeah. No. Oh, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I don't think we can. You can. It says on the article. Google it really quick. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can. Can Can't hear you. Can, do you think it's Is worth all the effort to keep it like stabilized in its place for New Orleans? Not really, because like in our in our experience, the water still went through. Danielle's well, yeah, yeah, but like. Yeah, it would because then it would like. No, it's not. Okay, okay we're it. a group here, so I don't know. Um, I don't think so. I mean, some of us, like, some agree, some don't. Because like in our experiment, when we put in the blocks, some of the water still went through. Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. Well, the, no. Well, that's well, just because our well nature is gonna like good. find yeah. another way. I mean, uh, nature is like gonna no, no. find another way to like. <laughs> I mean, like. I think it would be worth saving because like once like a whole like town or like New Orleans gets like used to the way like the Mississippi River goes, they kind of like set their whole like lifestyle around that. So it's changing course, like it could change everything, you know? So yeah, I think it is worth saving. Yeah, it's a city. Yeah, what is it? Like, do you think, like, uh, putting barriers around the Mississippi River is worth it? Like, worth saving New Orleans? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All right, guys. You're doing it. I'm going to. Woo! <laughs> didn't come in yet. Oh, it's tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like log out and the drizzle. Here? Yeah. Oh, wow. signed in with a different account. Yeah. <laughs> you actually saw Bella. I was like, saying, no, delete it. Because I saw it. I like to like the beginning of it. Oh, so, too late. No, delete it now. Why? Well, what's wrong with you? Oh, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> It's just, it's too hard. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine. <laughs> <laughs>
We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> oh, it's not in here. It's in my email. Go over there. Go to drive. It's not in my drive. I didn't save it in my drive like that. Go to share with me. No, 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 no. Go to. Oh, yes. I think that's no, I'm on. Alright, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like this is our party. Or our plan is. Mm. Um. So our claim is the Mississippi River will change course to create a new delta without human intervention. All right, so, okay, we, we got like a prediction. What do you guys think happened here? Flooded. Okay, but like, like how? Like, what do you think? Like, Mississippi changes direction. Okay, so yeah, that is what happened. Well, yeah, kind of, yeah, that's what happened. I think this is for the hurricane, but like for our purposes, let's just say that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> oh, so some vocabulary. Delta is a, is a form. It forms when sediment charges, not charge streams, enter relatively still water, so like lakes and islands and shit like that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Channels are smaller channels that carry water away from the main channel and varying paths to the base level, and a bar is a term for sand and gravel and deposits in stream channels. All right, so we got a video, <laughs> and it's, um, why do we have rivers? So. The world is divided into two kinds of people, those with innie belly buttons and those with outies. Rivers also have innies and outies, not belly buttons, but mouths. Where rivers flow into the sea, the land either pokes out or bends inward. But rivers don't have umbilical cords, so why do they have innies and outies? Well, coasts are the front lines between two opposing forces, land and water. In order for the ocean to invade the land, sea level either has to come up or the land has to sink down or be eroded away. And in order for the land to advance into the ocean, sea level either has to drop or the land has to build or be lifted up. Obviously, if sea level drops and then rises back again, there's no net gain on either side. But things get more complicated when a river joins the battle. For example, during the last ice age, sea levels fell by over 120 meters, and rivers cut deeper and deeper valleys to reach the falling seas. Then, about 18,000 years ago, warming temperatures began to melt the ice, and the now rising seas flooded river valleys around the world, creating giant estuaries and giving us the innie riddled coastlines we have today. But when the steady landward march of the seas finally began to slow about 7,000 years ago, the coastlines around the mouths of some rivers began to gain back some ground. The key factor was the sediments that rivers drop as their currents slow at the entrance to the sea. Where the sediment supply was big enough and the ocean was calm enough, the dropped dirt piled up, eventually forming new land that both lengthened the river and divided it in two. Dirt would continue to drop out and build up at the mouths of both channels, splitting the river again and again and again creating a new lobe of land advancing slowly into the sea. Thus, the world's great Audi river mouths, the fertile deltas like the Nile and the Yangtze that have helped foster human civilization since its birth, all came into being at just about the same time. The same can't be said for all of the world's Audi belly buttons. What can be said, though, is that Innies and Audis, for both rivers and people, are a small record of how we came to be. A huge thank you to the following organizations, yeah, yeah. all okay. working towards sustainable deltas, for sponsoring this video. The Belmont. What the? <laughs> okay. It just happened. Oh, anyways. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, anyways. Okay. I guess. Okay. So. Um, what we did was we created um, a river, and so hypothetically speaking, New Orleans is right there, where that arrow is, and so we just let it flow and like just watched where it was gonna go and where it was gonna like turn, and we like basically like calculated each like we put the timer on and we saw each time the river channel or river the mainstream river thing changed courses. So right now this is at zero. So what do you guys think will happen? 
all at once. <laughs> all right. All right. So we let the water run for five minutes and recorded each time the new yield of corn. So this was at 16 seconds. This was at 42. This was as a minute and 16 seconds. Um, two minutes, 27 seconds. About four minutes. So as you can see, New Orleans is kind of like gone. Yeah. So how does this influence human activity? Well, if the delta keeps changing, then cities around these rivers will start sinking, basically. Yeah. What do you think are some ways we can stop deltas from moving into cities? No one? Anyone? Barriers. Okay, barriers. So what we did was we put two barriers around New Orleans and we created a river and calculated each time it would change deltas and saw if it would like go into New Orleans and so New Orleans was saved. There was a little flooding right over there right in that corner which was actually a good thing because um, you need more sediment for the land to stay up so you know so there's more layers of land so that went home well. so this is our last result and the end of five minutes so yeah as you can see New Orleans did not flood and the delta did change around here so our question is um what problems could be faced in the real world if we really did create those barriers like what would be some actual things like in reality but like if we created those barriers and they wouldn't sink like what would be a problem with having those barriers And those are our citations. So, do you guys have any um, questions? Um, flooding and like the whole land going down. <laughs> we built a dam and like we live next to Wait, the in the dam or wait? <laughs> or like just. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, well, you'd see like a big wall as your view. Yeah. The ocean, I mean, the river. <laughs> and, uh, Engineers. <laughs> um, like shipping companies. Um, one of the things that most people live near, like barricades and tunnel 
whatever designers are putting in their plans, they typically need to design closer to our team. I really enjoy it. How do you guys think that is? This is still a little fun. I was in the future. I was in the future. Noise. What about this place? Loud. So it's already loud there, or it's going to be loud there? Finish the rest of it tonight for homework. Okay. But what I'd like you guys to do. Oh, I gotta oh, stop broadcasting. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I wanna try it. Do you think I can get my fingers to line up? No. No. And right there. No. Uh, oh, the shadows. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 